you were talking about the card. That's the one thing I find interesting in Portugal is that in certain aspects, you know, like real estate, it's like, what kind of jungle is it here? Like uh, when you compare, for example, to America, how everybody has a license and everything is done like very professionally or it should. Uh, well, here is like the Wild West. You know, people have no idea what they're doing and it's all very weird. On other things, they're super far ahead. Like um, now things are becoming even more effective. Uh, now there's this uh, Chave Mobile Digital. So I actually have now my ID card and driver's license in my phone. Oh. So as valid as if I had the actual physical card. So if I'm pulled over by the cops or whatever, if I need to sign a document or any legal stuff, that app works. It can also generate a QR code that they can validate it at the place. Um, and also, last year, they approved a law where now you'll be able to sign deeds and other kinds of official documents remotely, like through Zoom. The, uh, the thing is, for that, it does require you to be a Portuguese citizen. More specifically, you need to have a citizen's card. But uh, yeah, on that regard, it is evolving quite a lot. It is, isn't it? Look at this. So this is a Chave Morvel, a digital. This is um, the digitalization of Portuguese um, governance and affairs and management, citizen management. Um, Send us the link. Send us the link. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, I want that. You can't be. You can't do it as a resident. You have to become a full-on citizen for this one. Yeah, oh. As far as I'm aware, yes. Uh, at okay. least for the uh, citizens' card, of course. Um, and I'll I'll tell you too. This is all fairly recent. The reason why I now understand this a bit better and why I have it is actually because of uh, the guys that do the electricity contracts. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was in there at their at their place. And uh, they helped me create it. You know, you need to use a, a card reader. They put it on the computer. They activated it. I associated my phone and my phone number with it. Now it's all set up. And, you know, the best part is when I went and did that, I actually forgot my citizen's card there. And then, and then I had a few deeds that I needed to sign as like a translator or something of the sort. And then I used the phone to take care of that. But now I do have my card back. So... Whoa. Okay. So uh, in interesting. You, we, we, we have you out there in the field testing these things for us. Uh, this is fantastic. So broadly speaking, then you're a fan of this new system, are you? Oh, and one more thing it allows you to do. You can actually like any PDF. You can download the government app. You can select to sign with Shav Mobile Digital. You upload the document. You, you can even type out the reason for the signature or whatever. It will send you a text message confirmation code. You confirm it. You need to log in as well. And then the PDF will become digitally signed with uh, your signature. It's certified. It has all of the government validations and whatever, and it becomes a legal signature. Um, I've mixed feelings about this, I've got to say. Um, it, you do. On the face of it, yes, on the face of it, it sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Um, but how long till a digital implant? <laughs> It goes goes with it. Um, I yeah, wonder. <laughs> well, well, and and hacking, you know, the possibility of how can people access your information more easily? All those kinds of questions that come up anytime you're sharing private information. And the well, government tracking everything you do. Exactly. That's that's the worst aspect of this, isn't it? That does sound quite open to deep fake abuse. Um, oh, there so we interesting, go, yeah. isn't it? That every time something comes out, the, somebody's working on how to hack it or abuse it. I'm kind of glad residents are not able to do that. So which one was that then? Um, and those digital documents on your phone only work if the authorities also have a device to check its validity, which they don't. Probably, probably. <laughs> um, I would imagine that you would take the usual three-year administration process to reach the deepest, darkest fund out as well. So Pete's caught breathing a sigh of relief. I mean, over the weekend, I did see somebody posting up, um, how about a cashless, or how long will it take to have a cashless society in Portugal? Portugal is, I mean, my response to that was Portugal is, is brilliantly set up for a horror of that kind, isn't it? With the with the NIF, with the, you know, how everything is tracked, as you say, and the multi-banco system, MB way. We, we've got, we're some way towards this vision, are we not? 
Perhaps, although I'm not entirely convinced that that will be the case. Um, mm. and it has a little bit to do, I guess, with the Portuguese government in a way, uh, because the way taxation and all of those things are set up here in Portugal, it makes it very tempting for almost everybody to do under the table dealings because yes. of the high taxes. Yeah. And I, like I've had showings with a realtor that I had just met and within the 10 minutes they would tell me stuff like hey so this home is for 150 but the owner will sell it for 120 if you give them 20,000 on the side and we sign for 100,000 or stuff along those lines right which is clearly illegal um but i mean another thing for consideration is that a little over 36% of portuguese gross domestic product is taxation oh wow okay so, so yes like an over, what was that percentage again 40 is that six percent 36 point something. 36 wow that's a, so that's a lot. Um, almost everybody like you go to the feira right the the markets they don't ask they don't care you give them the cash they give you the goods you go on <laughs> Yes. And then the, the cops sometimes show 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 up and they, yo, here's the box, just five hundred, never mind the two thousand in the hidden somewhere. Yes. Because there are there are GNA, GNR cars, aren't there, with Fiscal written on them. So there is a branch of the GNR that deals with those sorts of situations, is there that might check occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um I'm I, I'm not convinced that Portugal will become cashless. Uh if it does ever go grow into some sort of digital thing i'm guessing they will find something off grid quote unquote something that's not really government controlled like maybe crypto or something or decentralized platform but i don't know if enough people know about the technology to use it on a daily basis so i don't yeah. know or yeah or, or some sort of um a bartering token system because human beings will will i think will make quite a lot of effort to avoid being ensnared as they obviously already are i mean pete pete is saying at least his estimation at least half or of portugal's economy is black cash and no tax is very prevalent and it is it's, it's a fascinating um thing to consider really isn't it that whilst uh, many people who, who are new or want to move to portugal are very appreciative of its socialistic fabric the reality of how that is funded um, is clearly very different, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got a, like a moral and ethical model of how people might look after each other and how that's funded. Yet the everyday reality of that is people would rather not pay tax or not pay it in the way that is set up because it's yep. rather punitive or unfair. Um, so th there is some work to be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And like, uh, it's very costly to have a company here in Portugal. So for yeah. example, let's say I hired you and they pay you minimum wage, which is like 700 euros a month or something yeah. i would have to like you would re for you to receive 700 which you then would have to pay around 110 social security i would need to pay from my company bank account about 1150 yeah so you would only receive about half of what i would spend in my company to keep you there yeah. and for example the other thing too is that if you're uh, the the manager of a company, you must have your own salary and pay social security. Mm -hmm. So you also need to go through that with you. So plus the accountant fees, which you need to have an accountant, plus a bunch of other things. So you're burning at least, I don't know, 700 or more euros per month just to have a company open. I need clients, please help. No. <laughs> uh, that's right. Well, it keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? It keeps you busy having to, to pay all these extra costs and so on. The, co the cost of doing business, and it's, it is considerable, and it's also quite uh, um, administratively heavy uh, here in Portugal as well, yes. so it's worth knowing about that. Um, thank you, for We weren't expecting to be talking about that. Uh, not only those woes, but IMT got mentioned as well. 